Well, back on site this morning. Let's go and have a look at the uh, foundation that we put in yesterday. Well, here we are, here's the foundation. 300 millimeters deep and it's approximately 350, 375 wide. We're just gonna put um, a 300 millimeter high uh, block wall in here, a uh, block on flat nine inch, and it's gonna return around that side over there. We've got this tree here at the moment. I've cut out the roots, was, that was a cherry tree. So got some block work to return around there. We may have to step it up at later and put a bit more concrete in there. But in the meantime, what this is, allows us to do, and we've got a good day for it today, but we can start putting some block work in, in here. The thing that you can see, I don't know if you can see, you probably can for those guys that have been doing this a while, that that fence is not square with the, the boundary fence with the neighbor on that side. So um, it doesn't matter, there's gonna be a, a border on the back edge here. We're not gonna necessarily run the pavement right up to the fence line. Um, so it won't show the the squareness in the, the proposed patio. But the concrete's gone off nice. <laughs> That's nice and solid. It's not gonna go anywhere, we can lay on that now. And we're just gonna be putting the block wall up, so let's just get on with it. Well, I've been into uh, Juicens this morning uh, because they were near to me and they were the local uh, merchants open by me. And I've got, I'm only putting a small wall up this morning, so I didn't want a whole bolt bag here. So I bought it in the small 25 kilogram bags. And I know I've checked this and the, and the sand always make sure that your sand inside is dry because you know you you buy it wet and then guys add water to it and then it's just too wet and then you can't use it it's not good at all so just make sure your sand is dry well this is the uh, mortar plasticizer I used all last year and I've used it for, for years on and off um, and it works it works perfectly uh, I just, uh, you see so many guys using fairy. Have I used fairy before? Yeah, I have, just to get me out of trouble, just to get it uh, to get it done. But it can get you into trouble, especially if you use too much of it. And um, not a good thing, really. I've seen so many uh, sort of building developments over the years where they've used fairy and you, years ago, they, they chuck lashings and lashings in it. Got to use the right stuff to get the right reaction so the mortar goes off correctly. So get it right, I suppose. We all learn. Check the fab in with the sand now. Let that go around a little bit and tiny little bit of water. But I'm ready to go. Custer's already brought me some water out and uh, some chocolate uh, because they know I'm not feeling good. I got a bit of a cold this morning. And we've got a nice cup of coffee and already I've got the cup dirty. Just while we're waiting for the, uh, the plasticizers to start working, you can see on these new developments, and you know, I live on, on one as well. well. Mine's about 14 years old now. But sometimes you are overlooked by uh, neighbours, which is fine, it's not too bad. But you can see that tree in the corner has got to come out, but we have to think of another alternative. That cherry is not good for that position because, you know, the, the root's going to just kill the wall and everything, you know. Uh, and you've got another one over there, so we have to think about that. Already I've cut some roots. But you do want some trees in a garden simply because it's going to create a bit of privacy, you know, and don't put those conifers in for goodness sake, like, you know, because they're just going to, unless you've got a big piece of ground, it's not going to affect anyone and you don't want it to affect your light. You can see the sun coming up here. This is a fantastic south facing garden. They've got a patio while I'm stood on here and uh, it works and you don't really block in all that sunshine out. That's why, you know, we have this patio here. When the sun wraps around in the summer and gets high, they'll be able to enjoy this part of the garden. Well, we haven't got the mix going on in hyperlapse or time lapse, uh, what do you ever want to call it? Um, we'll probably put it on hyperlapse when I'm building the wall, maybe. You can have a little look at that. Um, laying bricks in temperature. Today is between 9 and 10, and uh, so it's looking good. The sun's coming out. Uh, but the, the rule is never lay anything uh, below 2 degrees. And um, I have. I have in the past, but I've covered things up, and it's been fine. It's been absolutely fine. You can create the right environment for it. Uh, I'm not advocating that you should do it, but I have. You, sometimes you meet these challenges head on if you want to get things done and you can take precautions to cover things up and uh, depending on how you mix your mortar and your muck. But generally, the general rule is never lay uh, sort of uh, below two, uh, two degrees. So there you go. A bit of uh, spec for you, I suppose, that you guys want. <laughs> well, that looks about right and it sounds about right.
we've got a string line up and uh, we're running the blocks in along there and I have to run it tight because they're gonna have uh, let me explain they're gonna have children here they've got one on the way and what we don't want if there's a patio we don't want any gaps between the fence and uh, the wall and uh, normally I would leave a bit of a gap because if they have to take the fence out um, they could get access to it but we don't want any little feet going down in those caps so whether I'm doing the right thing there or not I think I am well I know I am we don't want any gap gaps going down there we've got to keep it nice and tight and uh, uh, make sure those little feet don't fall down there so let's get on with it